like it. Uh, before we get into the Word today, amen. You need me, Brother Craig? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, Brother Craig, uh, I'll just share it with you. I don't think he'll care. Brother Craig has been riding his bike to work uh, this week, and he has to ride it through some areas that uh, at that time of day or any time of day, you don't normally want to be riding your bike through. So let's pray for Brother Craig. He's trying to get uh, a job situation taken care of, and we stand in agreement with him on that. Amen. Before we get into the Word this morning, I, I wanted to say congratulations and just love on a beautiful couple. Uh, that we love in this church, and thank you, praise team. You guys are wonderful. Amen. Amen. Give them a hand of appreciation. We appreciate them. But we wanted to say happy anniversary today. My goodness, 57 years. They don't even look that old, do they? But can we give a round of appreciation and a hand to Brother Bobby and Sister Martha? 57 years. Amen. We love these guys and are so appreciative of them and all that they do for our church, but we just wanted to say happy anniversary and uh, let you guys know that we love you and we care so much about you. Ba Pastor Dave, I assume, I don't know, this is the first time we've ever done this. Are you going to give me a signal or are you already rolling? Well, oh, hey, we're live then with everybody who's joining us online that may not have been able to make it to the house of the Lord this morning. And uh, we just want to say we miss all of you guys, those of you that are joining us right now, wherever you may be in your living rooms, uh, on your computers. We love you and we sure can't wait to see you back here in the house of the Lord with us. We certainly understand uh, everybody being cautious and coming uh, back to normal uh, in their own time. And so we love everybody uh, out from our body of believers and just pray that the Lord is being good to your family. For those of you here in the service and watching online, 4 o'clock today, 4 o'clock, Little Legends will go live. And so uh, at 4 o'clock today, gather your kids around. We wanted to give people a chance to get home from church, eat, relax a little bit. So 4 o'clock today, for those watching online, that's 4 o'clock central because I know we have folks watching from the Eastern time zone every week as well. And so 4 o'clock Central, Little Legends will be on. And I wanted to say thank you to Alicia and Isaac. Haven't they done a great job every week? Good job, Isaac. I'm proud of you. You've done so good with Little Legends. Sister Sherea did an amazing Zoom call this week with all of our kids, did a PowerPoint with them. They had a little Bible study this week. And so everybody's just been stepping up in great areas. And, uh, and I just want to say thank you so much, and we appreciate you guys and all that you do. We're going to go into the word of the Lord this morning. And as I told you on Wednesday night, I had to apologize for uh, last Sunday. I preached for like an hour, which was just unbelievable. I've never done that. And so I'm going to be mindful today of your time and mindful, uh, but also mindful of what the Lord is wanting me to uh, tell you this morning uh, in the house of the Lord. Uh, and, and thank you to Brother Josh, too. He's running the doors today. Appreciate him and uh, handling everything for us um, on the outside. So. I remember growing up, and you probably had your favorite uh, cartoon. Uh, what, what was someone's favorite cartoon out there? Just holler at me. Mr. Magoo. Anyone say Mr. Magoo? Speed Racer. Speed Racer. What did you say, Amber? The Flintstones, Fred Flintstones. I feel like sometimes I'm driving Fred's car. My foot goes through the bottom of my floorboard on my classic truck, so I have to stop like Fred Flintstone. One of my favorites was uh, a guy by the name of Wile E. Coyote. Anybody like old Wile E. Coyote? I love Wile E. Coyote. I love the fact that he used to chase the roadrunner around, and I would always say, one day, right, Jason? One day, Wile E. Coyote is going to catch the roadrunner. Uh, I think he caught him one time when he shrunk down about this small and the, and the roadrunner was huge and he held up a little sign that said, okay, I caught him. You've always wanted me to catch him. Now what do you want me to do with him, wise guys, you know? And what I loved about Wiley Coyote is that he would take a beating, but what? He would always come back. Wiley Coyote would take a beating week after week, time after time, but he would always come back for more. But if you've ever watched any of those old Wile E. Coyote cartoons when he was chasing the Roadrunner, always before they ended and, and before they went off of the air, they would always show the coyote. And the coyote would, would have a little white flag, right? And he would finally wave that white flag. 
and he would say, I give up, right? I surrender. I don't want any more, uh, I don't want any more from the Roadrunner. And I remember watching that and watching, the, uh, watching the, the coyote pull out his raggedy old white flag and he waved it in defeat to that pesky Roadrunner. You may not know the history of the white flag. And this morning I'm going to bring you the sermon entitled Wave the White Flag. Ancient historians tell us that both China and Rome noted the use of white flags to signal surrender. In the former empire, in the Chinese empire, the tradition is believed to have originated with the reign of the Eastern Han Dynasty, which was AD 25, though it may even be somewhat older than that. The Roman writer Cornelius Tactus even mentions use of a white flag uh, in AD 109. So what, what are you trying to tell me today, Rick? I'm trying to tell you that white flags have been used as a sign of surrender for years and years and years. Since white cloth was common in the ancient world, they probably used white cloth because it was easy for them to do. They may have used white cloth because it was readily available, right? And so that's why we have white flags today. The color white has long been associated with death and mourning in China. And a lot of people believe in the ancient, Chinese, uh, the ancient Chinese rule that those soldiers would use white flags because they were showing their sorrow in being defeated. Well, maybe you want me to fast forward to more recent history. The white flag has become internationally recognized symbol, not only for surrender, but also for the wish to initiate ceasefires and conduct battlefield negotiations. A lot of medieval armies, they carried white wands and standards to distinguish themselves from combatants. Even Civil War soldiers waved white flags of truce before collecting their wounded. The various meanings of the flag were later codified in the Hague and Geneva Conventions of the 19th and 20th centuries. And those same treaties also forbid armies from using the white flag to fake a surrender or to ambush someone else. So basically what I want you to understand and what I want you to realize today is that when we see a white flag, Brother Billy, especially when we see it on a battlefield, when you see a white flag and you see a white flag hanging from some kind of uh, battlefield flagpole, typically that's a signal meaning I surrender. That, that, that's a symbol that means I'm done fighting. I don't want to fight this battle anymore. But I want to tell you this morning and want to speak to us both in this building and online today that I believe some of us spiritually need to be waving a white flag this morning. Come on now this morning. I believe there's some of us that have yet to surrender to God everything that we need to surrender to God. And I want to tell you something this morning, church. I believe that we truly need to surrender to the Lord today. I believe this morning that there are those under the sound of my voice. There are those watching via live stream right now that need to surrender to God. You've been wrestling and you've been fighting with him. You've been attempting to keep your own will at the forefront of your life, but God is trying to do a new thing in you. I want you to hear your pastor this morning. The word of God tells us that the latter will be greater than the former. What does that mean? Break it down for me in today's language. Pastor, okay, I will break it down. It means that what God is going to do in the future is way better than even what he's done in your past, amen? And some of us need to get in here spiritually and say, okay, God, I surrender. I wave the white flag to you, Lord, and I want to give you control, complete control, not just partial control. I want to give you complete control of my heart and of my life. I, I think of it in Romans chapter one, uh, 12 and verse number one. Paul says this. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life. Come on and hear this. Take your sleeping, your eating, your going to work, your walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Listen, everything that we do in our lives, everything we do on a day-to-day -day basis, it should be towards the Lord. 
We should do everything as if we were doing it unto the Lord, amen? We should do everything with excellence. I know a a lot of times people get upset with me because I I don't want to release a certain thing or or do a certain thing a certain way because I don't want to just halfway do things, especially when it comes to the church. I don't want to just halfway produce things or halfway send things out into the public. Why? Because if we're doing things for the Lord, then we should be doing them with excellence. Come on, somebody, and help me. I've been preaching to empty chairs for a long time, so help me this morning. We need to be doing things with excellence, amen? No matter what you do in your workplace, in your home, no matter what you do in your life, it should be doing it with excellence. Why? Because you're doing it as unto the Lord. I think about Luke chapter 9 and verse 23. It says this, Jesus said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and do what? Take up his cross daily and follow me. I want to tell you something this morning. When you wave this white flag of surrender spiritually for the Lord, it's not going to be something that's easy. Come on, saints, tell me this morning. Who's ever been there where you've surrendered to God? And you know it's not easy. You know it's not an easy thing to do when you say, God, take uh, control of my life. Because listen, when you surrender to God, he'll ask you to do things that you don't want to do. When you surrender to God, he's going to take you places that you don't want to go. When you surrender to God, you're going to have to quit hanging out with people that you know you shouldn't be hanging out with. When you, when you surrender to God, you're going to have to quit drinking things that you know you shouldn't drink. Come on, somebody. You're going to have to quit ingesting things that you know you shouldn't ingest. When you surrender to God and you say, God, take control. Somebody this morning, either uh, online or in this place this morning, you need to hear this right now. When you surrender to God and you wave that white flag, uh, your life is going to change. Come on. We shouldn't just wave this white flag and say, God, I surrender to you and everything stay normal. When we wave the white flag to the Lord, it should be a complete altering of our life. I want to tell you, following Jesus Christ, it comes with a price. It involves emptying ourselves every single day of our desires. And we need to want to be filled with the desires of Christ. I can imagine the look that people have either online and I can see the look on your face today. And you're probably thinking to yourself, Pastor Rick, that seems so extreme. You're giving me one of those old school extreme sermons today because I live under grace now. And grace tells me that uh, that I can be saved no matter what I do in my life. Listen to me. If you are uh, saved today, it's not a, a question of what can you get by with and still be saved. Come on now. If you're saved today, you're gonna wanna do what is pleasing unto the Lord. We have a generation now that wants to see how much can I get by with and still make it into heaven. But I want to tell you this morning what God wants us to say. God wants us to say, hey, I'm willing to give up everything to make it into heaven. I'm willing to give up my entire life to make it into heaven. And I'm willing to give up everything to make sure that my family makes it into heaven. I'm telling you this morning that somebody needs to surrender to the Lord. Maybe, maybe this morning the, you need to ask yourself the question, is trading your rights and your wants and your selfish ambitions, is it worth it when it comes to the incredible joy of knowing Jesus Christ? I think of the things that I've laid down in this life. I think of the things that I laid down when I said, Lord, I surrender to you. Was it worth laying down those things? 100% yes. I had Sister Elliot this morning as we were talking about on my drive to church today. Uh, Sister Alicia and I were talking about it was almost like the very first time that we came to pastor here almost five years ago now, if you can believe that. I remember driving to church that morning and and us being just so nervous on starting a new chapter in our lives. And and this morning, driving to church after not being in the building for two months, uh, and Sister Sister Elliot said, are you nervous this morning? And I said, nah, nervous is a hard way to describe it. Uh, it, It's an interesting feeling this morning when you come back in in the house of the Lord. And and then she asked me this question, do you regret anything about uh, uh, your time as pastor over the last five years here? And I I can answer Sister Elliot, and I did this morning, 100% with the assurance that I regret nothing when it comes 
to following the Lord. Come on, somebody. I regret nothing to laying down worldly things and saying, Lord, I surrender to you. I regret nothing about giving up things of the world in order to follow the things of God. Can I tell you why? Because the things of God are greater than the things of the world. Come on now. The things of God are greater than what the world can offer us. Why? Because what the, er what the world offers us is death and pain. What, what the world offers us is sorrow. What the world offers us is confusion and anxiety and depression. But can I tell you what my Jesus offers this morning, amen? He offers life and life more abundantly, amen? He offers everlasting life this morning. He offers joy and peace that passes all understanding. And so this morning we need to just wave the white flag. I, I love the passage in Philippians chapter 3. It says, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Jesus Christ. What does this scripture mean? It means that we must deny anything of who we are to follow and to love and to worship, and we must center our lives on Jesus no matter what the cost. Some of us are going to have to make tough decisions. We're going to have to cut people out of our lives that have been draining us. Come on and hear me now. There's, there's two kinds of people in life. Those that are going to raise you up and the other kind of person are those that are going to suck you down. All right? We need to start getting with the people that are going to raise us up. I've preached this before and I'll preach it to you again. Some of us need a friendectomy in the house today. We need to cut some friends off out of our circle that have been dragging us down for a long time. And we need to surrender in everything that we do. It's surrendering in our lifestyle. It's surrendering in what we listen to and what we watch. It's surrendering on what we put into our bodies. It's surrendering on how we worship. Come on now. How we worship. See, worship is so much more than, than just singing songs on Sundays or Wednesdays. Worship is far more than, than just a weekly gathering in a building. It's definitely not about checking off a to-do list of re religious exercises. But true worship is about waving the white flag of surrender to Jesus in victory of gain. Listen, when we wave this white flag, we don't, we don't lose anything. Come on now and hear me. Now, maybe in, maybe in military circles, when you wave the white flag, you lose the battle. When you wave the white flag in military circles, you might lose the war. But let me tell you what happens when you wave the white flag in spiritual circles. When you wave the white flag to God the Father in spiritual circles, you lose nothing, but you gain everything. Come on now. When you wave the white flag in spiritual circles, you gain everything. You gain life everlasting. You gain a relationship with Jesus Christ. You gain peace that passes all understanding. You gain scriptures that say you've been made more than a conqueror. You gain scriptures that say that you are victorious through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Time to surrender this morning in Jesus' name. We have to make sure that even in worship that we are waving a white flag of surrender to him in victory of gaining him that we're living a life that is holy and pleasing to God that we're living a life that reflects him in all that we say and that we do we must all this morning put ourselves aside wave the white flag spiritually and surrender to his will let me tell you the second thing that we need to do though this morning the second thing that we need to make sure that we do not do the first one we do need to do, we need to make sure that we surrender to the Lord. The second thing I want you to understand this morning is that we do not need to surrender to the enemy. Come on, let me say that again. We do not need to wave this flag to the enemy. Over the last couple of weeks as this pandemic has been rolling on, I've been hearing from our missionary friend, missionary Les Melton out of Guatemala. Brother Les will be in church and in service with us in August as he comes back to the States for a little while. We were just with Les as we put a new church uh, roof on a new church in Costa Rica. And so we've been watching his live streams and, and Brother Les wrote this on his Facebook the other day. He wrote this, about 30% of the 18 million people in Guatemala, Guatemala work informally. That means that they sell flowers or they sell candy on the street corners. Maybe they sell fruit from their house to house or they cut grass with machetes. Maybe they make tortillas or they have other odd jobs around their homes. 
because of the economic crisis that the world is in, most of the people in Guatemala have lost their jobs and their small daily source of income. Come on, is somebody hear this today? There are so many that had regular jobs and they have lost them. So Guatemalans have been generous to one another and they've been helping their neighbors. So the government in Guatemala began a program of sending provision boxes to needy families. They've given out over 150,000 provision boxes and they're in the process of giving out 50,000 more, which means that a total of 1.1 million Guatemalans will be supplied with one week of food. Now the church is there, Pastor Les, they've joined in on helping in the crisis. And Les writes this, we've sent out two rounds of provisions to our pastors here in Guatemala. About two weeks ago, we began hearing that in two of the poorest zones of Guatemala City, come on, I want you to hear this today. In two of the poorest areas of Guatemala City, the families had no food and they began putting a white flag on the window of their homes. Come on and hear what I'm telling you today. They began to take a white piece of fabric and they would hang it on the outside of their homes out of the windows and that would tell the government and the people passing by that we have an emergency in our home and we're out of food and we need you to come and help us and we need you to provide something for us so it escalated and, and the Guatemalans even went into the streets and instead of just hanging the white flags on their homes and their windows now they began to carry small white flags in the street and they would go down the streets asking for help by carrying a white flag around. I, I want you to understand something uh, this morning. I believe we are in a crisis in the world right now. Now listen, I, my, my goal and my plan, just as a side note, is to help Pastor Les. And if the Lord is tugging on your heartstrings right now to help Les, yeah, for 25 bucks you can feed an entire family for a week. A family of four for a whole week, 25 bucks, you can feed them. Uh, you, you write it on an offering envelope, you put it in the bucket, you call me, and we'll make sure we support as many families. And I know Les will watch this, and, and I'm, I'm telling Les that we're going to support as many families as we can. If you want to help feed a Guatemalan family, 25 bucks for a week of food for a family of four. But I want to tell you something right now. I believe we're in a crisis in the world. Can you say amen? I believe we're in a crisis right now where the world around us is waving their white flags. It's not just Guatemalans hanging it in their windows. I I'm telling you that we're surrounded in a world right now uh, that are waving their white flags of surrender. They just can't take it anymore. Come on now. Their homes are broken. Their lives are in shambles. And depression has a crippling grasp upon many of those who you and I come in contact with on a daily basis. They have their white flag of surrender out today. And and they're waving it. They're saying, I can't take anymore. They, I can't take any more of this. You may not be able to see a physical white flag in their hands, but I'm trying to tell you this morning that their dependence upon drugs and alcohol, their dependence upon egregious sexual escapades, that is the unmistakable white flag signal for help in this country. See what the world needs to realize and what our country needs to realize. Help me preach this morning is that to have peace in our lives, that we must call upon one name, and that's the name of Jesus Christ. Come on and hear me today, church. It's not the name of Mary Jane or Jose Cuervo. It's not the name of Bud Light or Playboy. It's not the name of Larry Flint or the name of Jack Daniels. But it's the name of Jesus Christ that will change situations. It's the name of Jesus Christ that will cure their ails. It's the incorruptible, the undeniable, the all-powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that will change their lives today. On a daily basis, we're walking by people who have hung the symbolic white flag of surrender over their families. They've hung the symbolic white flag of surrender over their homes. You may not be able to see them carrying a white flag down the streets like you would in Guatemala, but Sister Gibbons, I'm sure that we come in contact on a daily basis with people who have concealed white flags under their coats and are carrying them down the street saying, I don't know if I can go on any longer. I don't know if I can make it anymore. I think I'm just going to hang this white flag out and I'm just going to give up to the 
devil. But let me tell you something this morning, church. What I love about our body of believers is that we have a great heart to outreach people that need help. Come on now. It doesn't matter if the town prostitute walks through those back doors. It doesn't matter if the town uh, pimp walks through the back doors. God has instructed us to answer her call and his call of surrender by, guess what, loving them in Jesus' name. If the biggest meth head in Harris County comes to our next event or service, we need to continue to love that woman or to love that man with open arms. Somebody hear me today. I don't care what their past is. I don't care what they've got going on. I'm going to love them like the Lord says to love them. I don't care how many white flags of surrender they may be carrying in here. We need to love them like God says to love them in the name of Jesus. I think about the scripture in Matthew 25. Please let me read it in verse 34. Then the king will say to those on his right, this is when Jesus was telling the parable of separating the wolves from the sheep. And Jesus said, the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creator of the world. For what? I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. Come on, does this sound familiar today? I was in prison and you visited me. And then those righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? When did we ever see you thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and show you hospitality? When were you naked that we gave you clothing? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say this. Come on and hear it this morning, church. That I tell you the truth. Whatever you did to the least of these of my brethren. Come on now. You did unto me. Whatever you did to the least of my brethren. Then you did unto me. And then the king will turn to those on the left. And he will say, away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. All oh, the Lord's preaching this morning now. I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you did not visit me. And then they will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you and the Lord will answer I tell you the truth when you refuse to help oh man are you hearing me today when you refuse to help those waving their white flags when you refuse to help even the least of these you were refusing to help me come on now I don't want to be someone that refuses to help someone sindling the white flag there's white flags all around us right now People in dire need of help and of love and of support. And I just got a question this morning. Are you going to be on the right where you help those in need? Or are you going to be on the left that says, I don't know you and I'm not helping you? I I'm trying to teach you something this morning. How many people around us are waving this flag of surrender right now? How many people need us to reach out and to love them today in the name of Jesus? We have an easy question we must ask ourselves this morning. Are we going to go back to doing things like normal? Mm. Wherever you are right now, if you have a tissue, or, or, or if you have a, anything in your purse, it doesn't have to be white. Come on and just, just get, out a, get out a flag real quick, wherever you are. If you need one and you want Isaac to, to bring a, this box around, we'll do it. You just raise your hand and I, Isaac will do it. Listen, I, I got a question for you this morning. Are we going to go back to doing things like normal? Listen, wherever you are in your homes right now, wherever you are watching this, grab something. I, I, I don't care what it is this morning. Go, go grab something. Are we going to do things like normal? Are we going to do what God has come? Hear me this morning. Come on. Are we going to go back to doing things like normal? Or are we going to do what God has called us to do and what Jesus Christ expects us to do? And that is love one another. Come on now and hear your pastor. Will we not only look at those white flags of distress hanging from the lives of those that are near us, or will we act with love and care? 
Will we feed somebody? Come on now. Will we feed somebody or give somebody something to drink? Will we visit them in prison or will we show hospitality or will we give them clothing? I want you to hear me this morning. Please listen to this. If you hear nothing else, I want you to hear the last portion of my sermon today. If you're listening online and you're about to click off, the Lord's speaking to you to hang in there and listen to this last part because he has a message for you today. Listen, I understand and I know, Brother Scott, we haven't seen this flag used in combat in a long, long time. We don't hardly see these white flags of surrender anymore. So I began wondering and thinking to myself, Brother Pagano, where do we see the flag? Where do we still see the flag today? And I thought of an interesting thing, and I wanted to bring it to you this morning. You know where we still see the white flag used pretty much every weekend, and that's in NASCAR races. I don't know anybody here is into NASCAR, you've ever watched a NASCAR race. But they have a man at the beginning of the race and at the end of the race, or a woman, a, a person. They have a person at the beginning of the race or the end of the race. And at the very beginning of the race, that person drops the green flag, and it means to go. There's times when that person drops the yellow flag, and that means everybody slow down. There's been a wreck. Sometimes they drop a red flag, and that means everybody needs to stop immediately what you're doing and do not move another inch upon the track. Oh, but hallelujah this morning. Do you know what it means when they drop the white flag? Come on, when that flag man in NASCAR drops the white flag, it means that I have one lap to go. Come on and hear your pastor this morning. I want you to tell, I want you to hear me and help me this morning. Did you just hear what I just said? The race is on its last lap. And I can tell you something this morning, church. If the race is on its last lap and NASCAR has the white flag, then guess what that means today? The race is not over yet. Hallelujah. The race is not over yet, but there's a lap to go. If NASCAR drops that white white flag, it doesn't mean to give up. It means you still have time today. I said the white flag in a NASCAR race means that there is still time. Hallelujah. In James chapter 1 and verse 12, the scripture says God blesses those patiently uh, who patiently endure the testing and temptation. And afterward, they will receive the crown of life. Can I read it again? God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Have you been tested over the last two months? Somebody say amen. Have you been tested throughout this coronavirus? Let me tell you what the scripture says today. Not what the county judge says or the government says. Not what the World Health Organization says or the CDC says. But what God the Father says. And he says those who just endure a little while longer. Listen, maybe you've gotten your teeth kicked in during this pandemic. Maybe you've been knocked down a little bit and got a throat punch but I'm here to tell somebody this morning that it ain't over yet in Jesus name it's not over yet for you in Jesus name the 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 Lord's just waving the white flag and telling you this morning that you still have time today I, I want you to understand that scripture the crown comes after the endurance that means we got to make it through some things before the crown comes we got to go through some stuff And so it is with the white flags that we may encounter in our lives here on this earth. May we remind those that may bear every white flag that we see. And maybe they are waving it as a sign of surrender. But may we as God's children remind them that the white flag doesn't mean surrender in every language. In the NASCAR language, it means I got one more lap to go. And I want you to remind someone that may be waving that white flag that they still have breath in their body. Do you understand what I'm preaching to you today? If you have the strength today, hear me, church. Come on and get your flag out wherever you are. Wave that. If you have the strength this morning to wave that white flag around, then you still have life in your body. And if you still have life in your body, then you still have a chance to fight in Jesus' name. Maybe it's you today. You've been locked up in this quarantine. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe uh, you've lost important people in your life. Maybe you've gone crazy sitting in your home for this long. And maybe you've been ready to wave the white flag of surrender. You say, Pastor, I can't take it no more. I'm about to give up. I can't fight any longer. I don't think I can make it. 
Or maybe it has nothing to do with this virus at all. And maybe you've just been in a battle for quite a while with the enemy. And he seems to have the upper hand. And you're simply just tired of fighting. Well, I want you to wave that white flag today. And I want you to remember and listen to me, church. This is not a sign that we're giving up. Come on, from now on, when you see a white flag, this is not a sign that we're giving up. No, 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 no. It's a sign to the world and to the enemy that we are still here in Jesus' name. Come on now. It's a sign to the enemy that you haven't knocked me out yet. It's a sign to the enemy that I still have a lap to go in Jesus' name. If you're able to wave this white flag today, and if you're able to lift your hands and wave that flag, then you still have life in your body. And if you have life in your body today, come on and understand you can overcome anything in the name of Jesus today. Will you stand with me all across the sanctuary today? Someone here needs to hear this today. Listen to the words of your pastor. Maybe it's you watching online today. You need to hear this. It's not over for you. Come on and, and, and mouth it to the person next to you or tell the family sitting six feet from you. It ain't over for you today in Jesus' name. It ain't over for you today in Jesus' name. This white flag means you have a little while longer to fight. Come on now. It means that it ain't over yet, but you still got a lap to go. And I'm telling you today, it ain't over. Wherever you are today, grab your white flag, grab your napkin, a tissue. I don't care if you're at home and it's some of that high dollar hard to find toilet paper. Somebody go grab something this morning grab your white flag today and just begin to wave it above your head wherever you may be come on today this church we don't claim this white flag as a symbol of surrender but today we claim this white flag as a symbol of perseverance a symbol of endurance a message to the enemy hear your pastor we are not done yet you're not done yet. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter what you're facing, you're not done. Your children aren't done. Come on and give the Lord praise this morning. Every hand just stretched out. We're not done yet. We're not done yet, Lord. But God, you have a great plan for some lives in this place today. This isn't a sign of surrender, but it's a sign that we still have life today in Jesus' name. It's a sign that we still have life we can still fight. We can still persevere in Jesus' name. Come on, wherever you are today. We're obviously not going to come up front. Trust me.